Hello YouTube and Facebook followers. I want to thank you for the overwhelming support of my video on how to cut your African cichlid food bill in half. At the end of that video, I mentioned that I would follow up with a video on what I feed my cichlids. Follow me in part two where I cover this interesting and important topic. In the part one video, I identified the winning, winning food brands based on ingredients, protein, and cost. This knowledge has been one of the key pieces of the puzzle in making decisions on what to feed my African cichlids. Ken's and Cobalt had a definite edge in all areas I researched, and I've had at least three years of success with both brands. My fish love them. For Mabuna, I recommended NLS because of its vegetable and algae content. My two large African aquariums, the 500 and 340 gallon, are beautiful tanks that I am very proud of. I give significant credit to the foods that I feed my cichlids for their robust size, colors, health, and longevity. I feed my fish twice per day in a quantity that is just enough to keep the food from reaching the bottom of the aquarium. I feed my fish only premium foods and I use Ken's premium cichlid sticks, Ken's premium spirulina sticks, and cobalt cichlid pellets. I mix these three foods together and in different proportions based on the type of Malawi cichlid and their relative sizes. For example, I mix in more spirulina sticks for my peacocks and mabuna, more premium cichlid sticks for my predator haps, and more cobalt for my smaller fish. In my observation, quite a number of Aquarius are very conservative in how much and how often they feed their fish. They are afraid of bloat. Once a month, I feed my Africans Ken's metrodinazole, and garlic sticks. This food is prepared with the precise quantity of the metro to kill off any internal parasites and prevent bloat. I feed this food for three consecutive days every month to all my Lake Malawi tanks. With this approach, there is little chance of under or overdosing your fish, which can be lethal. I have not had a case of bloat for five years, and for me, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. A few words on the cost comparison between the brands. No one challenged the fact that North Fin costs nearly twice as much as Ken's, for example. For a couple of subscribers to my channel who had trouble understanding why North Fin was so expensive, I did a deeper look into the comparison of the ingredients and the cost structure of the North Thin product. The ingredient comparison did not and could not explain the price difference. So what is responsible for the price premium for North Thin in the size package that was included in my evaluation? Here are a few facts to consider that I discovered in researching this matter that affect the manufacturer's cost, North Thin, of supplying their product to, to its customers. Obviously, making the product in Canada, having a very expensive package, having to incur extra transportation costs, bringing it into the United States, and of course, import duties and, and customs costs are very significant. I will let the uh, viewer draw their own conclusions on uh, these points. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.